welcome back. We're excited to continue this series. It's about meditation and studying the Bible. So we have some Bible study tips from Gabby here. Thank God. <laughs> She's uh, come here with a lot of knowledge. So we're going to recap a little bit about meditation because I don't want you to just click this and then all of a sudden you think it's meditating. <laughs> yeah. The worldly way. It's not the worldly way where it's meditating on an object or your, your breathing methods, that mindfulness meditation. Uh, about being the present this is about meditation by meditating in the word of god and building your relationship with god day and night uh constantly having him there with you yes. and you're able to hear his voice mm -hmm. so that is the type of meditation we're talking about today and a little recap i had ended it with how i was being corrected by god <laughs> if you heard the last part the very ending around there mm -hmm. where it's um god has spoken to me and like told me straight up right away to not rebuke an older man or like my yeah. mother in that case. Uh, so it, if you heard the story, you know the story. <laughs> yeah. Respect your parents. <laughs> yeah, respect your parents. He corrected me. And then so I want to bring a verse that talks about that where it's 2 Timothy 3.16 where it's all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. That's 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. So as you can see, God can correct you through his word. He can do, equip you for his calling. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> so I was very thankful. I was scared when I, <laughs> when I first, I was like, oh, wow, God, you're watching me. But I was also very thankful because a loving father will correct his son. He's just mm -hmm. not going to leave him like, whatever, like, go ahead and do whatever you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he'll correct you. So we're going to start off by talking about some of the different types of studying your Bible. Uh, and we're going to talk about the fast food approach the <laughs> where you're not very getting nutrition mm -hmm. um the spoon-fed approach the feasting method or they're not methods or just ways of describing the way you study the word yeah mm -hmm. there are different ways of describing how you read it so if you're waking up in the morning <laughs> and you you wake up and the first thing you do is you go on social media and you spend an hour scroll, scrolling through Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook, reading all the news feeds. All of a sudden, you said, "Oh, like COVID, like this hospital has this much," or, mm -hmm. or, "Oh, the, the government did this now," yeah. <laughs> or, "Oh, what's going on in the news now?" Um, or this person just got engaged. <laughs> this person's getting married. Uh, you're listening more. The first thing you do is seeing the things in the world what's going on around the world instead of actually seeing god first and speaking mm -hmm. to him first first thing in the morning so uh and then sometimes if you do that you'll read a bible verse along there yeah. <laughs> on your news feed and like oh yeah i read my bible every day <laughs> and it's that one verse that you liked on facebook or, or you get the you signed up for the you version verse of the day verse of the day yeah right. cool That's it. got it we're good <laughs> yeah you get your phone it alerts you oh verse of the day and then right after that verse of the day you go on instagram <laughs> get more verses for the day yeah more verses of the day or, or not more verses but you'll read it and then you scroll down and it's your friend posted this picture this company's trying to advertise this you're seeing all these different things and then you're like what did i just read mm -hmm. or someone can ask you so what'd you read today oh like oh um i forgot yeah <laughs> yeah so i call that the fast food approach where it's uh you get it quickly you get that verse of the day and that's it you forget just a drive by just a drive through mm -hmm. you didn't actually stay to eat to dine with god <laughs> and be having that conversation with him it was just something super fast and you're not getting any nutrition there's no transformation happening there's no like renewing of the mind because what you just read you forget yeah so um james 1 22 through 24 says but don't just listen to god's word you must do what it says otherwise you are only fooling yourselves for if you listen to the word of to the word and don't obey it it is like glancing at your face in a mirror you see yourself walk away and you forget what you look like 
So mm -hmm. this is what I call the fast food approach where you just see it and you look away and you totally forgot what you just saw. You're not actually looking intently at yourself and like going, how does God want to change me or anything? Mm -hmm. It's just you forget what you look like. Goes one ear out the other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's... Uh, then there's James 125, the next verse after that, which says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this is the one will, this one will be blessed in what he does. So it goes back to those verses that we're talking about in part one, where it's mm -hmm. meditating on the word of God day and night, and you will be prosperous and successful in everything you do mm -hmm. in this same verse right there afterwards it says like there's those who just glance and forget and yeah. then there's those who look intently and actually do what the word says and he will be blessed mm -hmm. there's a huge difference so if you do that <laughs> maybe you fall we into encourage this you to try a different attempt so mm -hmm. it's like the example that we gave um in the last video about the bee you mm -hmm. know you want to obtain that honey like the bee does from a flower. The bee doesn't just quickly land on it and leave. He spends time there. So you have to spend time in the word. You have to put time aside if you truly want to be transformed and be able to be encouraged, strengthened in the faith, and be able to um, defend yourself when times of like you know in in uncertainty, which is like times that we're living at uh, right mm -hmm. now. You know, that we need to have our faith strengthened, our faith, you know, firm in God's foundation. And that way we don't fall for just anything. Yeah. And if you're a visual learner like me, I love that example she gave of the bee who doesn't just pick out a flower and leaves mm -hmm. and gets her honey. No, the bee goes into it and spends time in that flower to in order to get that honey out of it. And it's like reading the word of God and like you're so satisfied with it. It tastes like honey. It's like you eat it, you consume it. It's a joy because you, God just spoke to you. And he's just not like there. He, you actually have a conversation. You actually have a relationship with him. And even just the way she describes it with that joy and excitement, you know, that is how, you know, after spending time in the scriptures, you start looking at God's word and you start kind of being anxious for like, ah, I need to t spend time with the Lord. You know, you recognize that you need God. You need his word to be able to strengthen you for the day, encourage you, edify you, bring peace, bring joy, you know, love, all that from him as Psalms said about the tree next to the the river oh, mm -hmm. you know if we spend time with the lord then you know we're always going to be able to get that stuff from the river of mm -hmm. the god's word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that water that satisfies you refreshes you mm -hmm. that refreshes you when you get that honey that joy it's a total refreshing of the spirit it's awesome <laughs> yeah like you won't look at the studying the word of god as just like all right let's go through leviticus see what it has <laughs> you know um you start really valuing everything that the bible has and you start really learning about god's character and you start falling more in love with him you yeah know? your love for him grows mm -hmm. i remember hearing someone like and not just someone multiple people where it's like oh it's because you just found out about the Lord. You just got saved. You just, this happens all the time. It happens in the beginning. You fall in love and you want to spread the word. And, but, you know, it's going to fade away. It you, becomes yeah. normal. And I, I remember hearing that and, like, my heart was, like, sad in a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not going to be me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's not a good relationship. I've heard other people uh, this one lady from TBN, <laughs> she, <laughs> she's married to, I forgot his name, but mm -hmm. it got left to him because the father died. Mm -hmm. But um, she said she had been married for 25 years or after 25 years, she was more in love with her husband then than she was in the beginning. And it's because of all the things you go through together mm -hmm. and you get to know the person even more. Like you don't even have to talk to them or you should talk to them, but like you already know what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is with God. Like I want to be so in love with you, but not just oh, just right now, just because it's the sparks, the, the beginning. Yeah. But I want to be years down the line and still be more in love with you. And I do love him more now because of the things I've gone through and I'm not perfect and I've stumbled and mm -hmm. I've seen how he still wants me and still picks me Pursues up. Pursues a relationship yeah. with you, yes. And then those times where you have the relationship and your communication is not good 
and like if it was with a person and your communication is not good like it's over you know mm-hmm. it, it ends but with him he's still there with loving arms and yeah. he still wants you and he still wants to spend that time with you like have our date nights and days <laughs> we're like have spend some time with you i have something to teach you i have something to tell you today like yeah, oh guys so it? dig in make sure you dig in <laughs> <laughs> yes let's dig in uh so that's the we're talking about the fast food approach where it's just like mm-hmm. a like on a Bible verse and that's it. And you forget what you just read mm-hmm. that day. You don't really meditate on it. And um, we also have the spoon fed approach where it's like, oh, I don't do that. I, I listen to a preaching at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it might be five minutes. It might be, it doesn't matter. Uh, but sometimes we seek other things instead of his word. So it is good to listen to other preachings. It is good to list, like look at have Bible Gateway or what or you version in your phone because you want more of his stuff to replace more of the worldly things. Mm-hmm. So if you used to watch YouTube videos, random ones, you want to replace it with YouTube videos that are preachers or of God. Mm-hmm. So whatever you spend your time before you you know you can spend it like in this way, and that's good. But it's dangerous when someone else is getting a revelation and you're not getting any Mm -hmm. and that's the only way you are able to kind of hear god's voice yeah not relying on other people's revelations but actually seeking your own which we had mentioned in the last video you know you can it's just Mm -hmm. whatever other people are receiving you can receive as well if you spend time with the lord in his in his presence and with the word yeah and uh, specifically, like, when you have YouTube and all these things where you get to choose what you get to watch, mm-hmm. uh, it's, is it what God wants you to see? Sometimes it is. But he can speak directly to you, and, like, you might have not expected it. <laughs> or you're like, oh, I just learned something new today, mm-hmm. or in Acts 20. And then if you would have just did your Bible verse of the day, or if you would have just read someone else's devotional, you would, and you see that devotional and you're seeing what they teach you but you're not seeing what god wanted to teach you in a different way uh so like if you have that that parable of peter you know walking on water and there's people who just see that and they'll explain it the way they got it interpreted the revelation Mm -hmm. but you don't see it the way god was telling you like you're going through this problem with your family Mm -hmm. you're going through um it could be someone just got COVID in your family And when he gives you that verse that day to read, he's like, don't be looking at the circumstances around you. Now he's speaking directly to you and in a different way Mm -hmm. than where if you would have read that same thing from a different preacher or devotional and they're teaching you something else. Mm -hmm. So those things are good for you and they're supplements, like your vitamins kind of in a way. But you have to have your own word of the day with him. Yeah, we just want to encourage you guys to just not rely on that fully, but actually, you know, try to set time apart in the scriptures yeah so have your own communication with god Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that's what i call the spoon-fed approach where it's just uh you're being fed by someone else someone else is getting it and Mm -hmm. making the food and they're feeding you so i'm gonna go with second timothy 4 3 uh it says For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. So that's why it's important to hear God and hear what he's saying to you, not just other people, because sometimes they can also lead you in different ways. Mm -hmm. What Gabby was saying earlier, too, where you can be deceived by TikTok or (laughs) or whatever it may be. Or any other person. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's important to have our strong foundation and, and can be able to tell right away, no, that's not correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then there's the feasting approach. This is where you get that joy, that honey. <laughs> so I have Psalm 119, 102 through 103 written down on here. And it says, uh, so it was Psalm 119, verse 102, verse 100 through 103. So I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. 
So this is the feasting one. This is when you're dining with God. <laughs> you're having breakfast with God. You know, you might have some actual honey on your <laughs> on your pancakes. Whereas, like, you didn't just read this. But like, oh my gosh, God, thank you. Like, wow. Like, I didn't see this like your character in this way before mm-hmm. or like what you did right there like wow like he's telling me like this he, like yeah i did this mm-hmm. <laughs> and like it's like your your relationship with him is growing and you're feasting and is not being spoon fed is not being uh your fast food it's not nutritional but you're getting that joy you're getting his word in you and you're just like thinking about it you had your date with him in the day but now you're like oh my gosh i remember he told me this yeah <laughs> and you're like thinking about it throughout the day and that night you come back and you're just amazed with what he said, and you keep meditating on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what I call the feasting approach, where it tastes his words taste to me like honey. Yeah. And we're gonna go over. Oh, I think you wanted to go over the the outline. Oh, so um, as she was saying about the feasting, so we wanted to share you guys. We already shared with uh, meditation about meditation. And if you've never meditated on the word of God before, um, J.I. Packer has a book called Divine Reading where he introduces um, a way to kind of, you know, follow some steps to help you be able to do that. So um, the first step would be silence. So take time to be silent, prepare to communicate with God as he expresses himself to you in the passage of scripture you have chosen. After a period of quiet time, ask God's help as you enter this session of meditative prayer. So you read a passage of the scripture aloud several times, slowly, allow its words and meanings to sink into your soul. The next one would be meditate. Uh, It's like chewing. It's slow and thorough. Write notes on what you see in the passage. Make connections between the various sections and ask yourself, what do these words from God say? What do they mean? Place who you are and what you do next to this passage and ask God to examine you. Continue to write your findings. Um, The next step would be prayer. Pray using the passage as an outline for your prayer. Read the passage phrase by phrase, responding to God after each phrase or verse. And then contemplation. Wait in stillness once more. Ask that God brings to your mind any areas of your life that you need to shape more closely to his design as revealed in this passage. Um, And then contemplate on God's love and power as it is revealed here. And then live it out. What precisely ought you to be believing, thinking, and doing as a result of this passage? Make notes about how you hope to bring these words from Jesus into your current practice. And then that is how you are able to not only retain what you just read, but it it stays with you a lot longer. It doesn't just go right through you, like if you were to just read the verse of the day, but you actually stay with it throughout your day. And maybe at that time, you're just like, oh, this is good to know. This is good wisdom for me for that day. Um, you didn't you just have it on you but then next week or months later something comes across where what you read was warning you against a certain action or a certain sin and you're presented that day with you know falling and doing that sin (laughs) or avoiding it so you can recollect the holy spirit will allow you to recollect that passage that you read and be like okay you know i read about this i know what to do Mm -hmm. you know i have that wisdom Mm -hmm. and that encouragement so that's why we meditation is one of the great ways that you can feast with God and um, a good way to start. Um, it can be 30 minutes of just reading and then spending time with the Lord. I know that in the U.S., you know, we have like fast paced fast food, mm-hmm. you know, um, pick up from the stores now. Oh, like yeah. we got no time to waste. Instacart. <laughs> yeah. Like we got no time to waste. We don't have that extra time to be, you know, we just sometimes yeah we sometimes are just so busy but with the word of god we do have to try to put that time apart because it is vital for our our growth and for us to be able to know god fuller and fall in love with him every day more and more for john the baptist he was called into the wilderness first before he started Mm -hmm. like baptizing people and then it's important to have that alone time with God. And then mm-hmm. Jesus, too, he had that alone time, too, before his ministry. Mm-hmm. And, to, and then was facing temptations, and then he had to overcome them. And then he started his ministry. And then be, when he was before he was going to be crucified, too, with the disciples, like, come with me up to the mountain. He went various times up to a mountain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been that alone time. You really need that alone time with God. Mm-hmm. And it's, I feel like, especially for Americans, that's a hard concept. <laughs> 
to retain. And it's one of the greatest gifts that we have that we sometimes don't take into account. You know, not everyone. There's a lot of persecution in other countries, and mm-hmm. they where they have to sneak out of their homes at 2 a.m. meet in a dark place to be able to spend time or even read the gospels and or the word of god and we have it so easily in our access you know we can we mm-hmm. have it in our phones we have it mm-hmm. you know some of us have more than one bible i know i have more than one bible <laughs> at my home you mm-hmm. know and it's just like sometimes we don't take the time to actually open it and and be able to get the you know the wisdom the encouragement increase our faith and under have a deeper understanding of who god is for us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's sad because we do have that opportunity and other mm-hmm. people don't. And then a lot of us are snoozing. A lot of us are mm-hmm. going to work instead, uh, sleeping late and not getting up early. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah. But once you start hearing his word and you start hearing his voice and mm-hmm. it's like, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> like yeah. You, once you have a relationship with your soul in love, you want to study that person more. You want to know what's their favorite color. What's uh, your favorite food? Like, okay, I'm going to go take you this. I'm going to yeah. <laughs> You want to build that relationship up and you, you want to honor him in it. and yeah. serve him and be obedient to him and just want to satisfy him in all that you do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you want to be, obey all his commandments. And then how do you do that if you don't know him? Mm-hmm. You don't know what his word says. And you have to, if you love him, you're going to obey his, obey his commandments and seek his word, meditate on it, and be sure to observe, to do according to his will, to all that he has and says. Yeah. So that was a good uh, outline of like an example of a how meditation. to meditate yeah mm-hmm. i love how it says to read a passage and then like ask him a question yeah. or like uh have that conversation after each passage so this is mm-hmm. an example mm-hmm. this is uh i do it sometimes by like reading a passage and then reading the one before that okay like why was this put in here like why is this coming after that like uh or there's just different things and that, uh, there's a lot of times where i say why why but that's when i ask why and i don't know why that's a a very good time for him to be revealing things to me Mm -hmm. and that's when he gets to speak to me like okay let me show you yeah Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not right away sometimes it'll take like two three days yeah or and if you don't know where to start Mm -hmm. you know always the good books are you know the book of psalms and the book of proverbs Mm -hmm. um and as you practice it you know eventually you know you're you'll be able to discern where god's leading you and you'll feel that nudge like oh like look at this book you know, mm-hmm. and then maybe. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So, but if you're looking to start, you know, the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs are always a great place to start. Yeah. And I love the book of John. John mm-hmm. was my favorite one to start. Uh, and when it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. Mm-hmm. So like, you want to talk to God? <laughs> <laughs> the word is God. In the beginning was the word and he had already laid the foundation of, you No, know, it says like in Luke, I was talking about the other time I was on here, not the last meditation part but another Mm -hmm. time where jesus is talking to his disciples and he's saying take up your cross daily Mm -hmm. Uh, if you love me follow me and he hadn't died on the cross yet he already knew what he came to do he was predicting his death and it shows you right there he's the same today yesterday and forevermore where it's not a timeline he already knows everything and he already has everything planned out he already has the book of revelation like and things are already coming to pass and it it shows you that there's like no time with him <laughs> like we as humans have the concept of time but he doesn't he's mm-hmm. the same all the time he is the i am yeah uh but since we went through the outline She's going to share with us some Bible study tips, some different ways. If you don't know how to necessarily read the Bible, like how can I hear God? Like Mm -hmm. all I do is see it and that's it. It straight up is that. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, meditation we had recovered. It's one. So the next one I want to go over with you guys is an inductive uh, study of the Bible, which is another way that you can feast on the word of God. Um, Meditation is not the same as inductive Bible study. Its purpose is not... Um, preparation for teaching or preaching as stated above meditation is a devotional reading of the scripture with the goal of drawing closer to god and jesus so um the way i started uh was with the soap method um i'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with the soap method but it is it's it's been great for me yeah and it's something very simple um 
So it's like an uh, what is it acronym? acronym yeah. <laughs> so the SOAP method, I was bad English. <laughs> <laughs> you read a passage of the scripture, uh, select a verse or a group of verses that was specially meaningful to you. Now, after that, you make observation about the verse. Focus on the facts: who, what, where, when, and why, and how. Uh, this helps us figure out what God may be teaching us based on the context of the scripture. Next, write down how what you've learned can be applied to us. How can you put into practice? And then prayer at the end. So, oh, okay. so how to apply? Mm-hmm. Apply is the A. Yeah. So, yeah. so scripture for S, O for observation, A for application, and P for prayer. Okay. And then you can start off with that. Um an accurate interpretation and correct application rests on the accuracy of your observation. So it's really important that um, as you're reading the scripture, the Bible passage that you select, you you try to really figure out who the audience is, what is God trying to say, who is he talking to, and that way you can be able to apply that scripture um, more accurately. Okay? And then once you get into the rhythm of that one, then there's also other Bible studies that are a little bit more thorough that you can do. So um, there's the book survey method is where you read an entire book of the Bible and it doesn't have to be the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is a long one. I mean, you can do that one if you would like, but um, if you want to start with something small, you know, there's always the book of Ephesians, James, Jude, um, the first, second Thessalonians, all the you, gospels, the too. gospels too. Um, so as you read that, you ask um, three to five questions you'd like to answer. Oh, no, sorry. That's the theme one. Sorry. Um, you read it several times and then you get a general overview of its contents. Um, study the background of the book and make notes on its contents. So I did one a uh, few, uh, like a while back um, on the book of Jude and um no judges sorry and the book of judges was really like i before i read through it but i didn't really actually look at you know what was going on in that time and even to this day i can still go back to that and i remember you know some vital lessons that i got from that book specifically so we'll probably end it with that method okay and then um so these are just things that you can start off with um the soap there's also a character quality that you can look for like something that you feel like you lack you can look at that up that character in people in the bible or um other verses that talk about it like wisdom you know we see that a lot in the book of proverbs and then as you read through it it starts transforming who you are and um, you'll be able to get a better understanding on what wisdom really is biblically. Yeah. So Proverbs is like the book of wisdom, like mm-hmm. uh, not the book of wisdom. Uh, it's, it's known it's for known to have for, a, lot yeah, of a lot of wisdom. Mm-hmm. So like who wrote it? And mm-hmm. then so I was looking up who was the author. And then he obviously had a lot of wisdom. <laughs> but we also have to remember that all scripture is it's inspired by God. It's God breath. Mm-hmm. So this is something like, oh, someone might have a question like, well, how do you know he was perfect? How do you know Luke who wrote, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> wrote this? How do you know Paul wrote this? How do you know? Uh, I believe like if it's in here, God can cast down fire from heaven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God can, if you're not meant to go to let's say the store right now i'm gonna go right after this and Mm -hmm. your car all of a sudden the flat tire and like god's trying to prevent something from happening he's delaying it like he causes all these things i believe in prayer i believe like he can hear you and he is the creator of the universe he has the whole world in his hands he has the stars they're not falling well some are falling stars but (laughs) but like the sun he placed it the moon he placed it where it is and at a perfect degree at a perfect distance from the earth because if we're one closer to one side we'll get on fire if we're closer Mm -hmm. to another side we'll be on ice and he does everything perfectly and intricately and then so when you're reading this don't think well i'm trying to see who this person is and Mm -hmm. who how was his character but like it's god so when you're reading your bible the first thing you want to do is pray and pray and say like how let me see through your eyes let your holy spirit to be the one who guides me not my own knowledge not my own sinful nature not my own like uh 
human way of seeing things but let it be your holy spirit who's teaching me who's guiding me who's showing me wisdom and who's showing me more of your character because when you're reading the word of god Mm -hmm. the god uh the word is living and active you're getting to know more of him like spending that meditation time with him you're Mm -hmm. communicating with him so we went over how many bible methods like Um, the soap and the book survey method and then the character quality method yeah we went a little bit through that so we're gonna end it right there we still have a couple more methods and we still gotta share our own ways of meditating with god and then i'm gonna share my way of um in 2011 little kim (laughs) not the celebrity but (laughs) little me (laughs) little kim yeah i know um so i'm gonna share (laughs) I'm going to share like how God spoke to me back then. And now I'm excited to share this with you guys, what happened back then. And we're going to get to it. But I hope you guys have a great day and you guys are encouraged. And hopefully by the next time you guys see this, you guys have already had like a revelation by God or some type of you heard his voice. So remember that this throughout this whole time, the question is, do you hear the voice of God, which comes from John? Mm-hmm. 10 my sheep hear my voice and they follow me mm-hmm. so uh do you have anything else to add or um hopefully this all helps you guys out and you guys feel encouraged and eager to dig into god's word yes let's dig in <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited to, you guys can put down your comments like oh i just got this like i saw this verse in a whole different way now mm-hmm. yeah so i'm excited to hear your stories and your growth too Bye, guys. Bye.